this video we're going to be looking at AI masking in Lightroom. Now you know it's been there for just under a year now and in other guises down through the, the past, but there is a new addition to this which works really, really well and will really speed up your workflow. So I'm going to dive right into this and show you what it can do. First thing we're going to do is go into the masks. And now you see we have subject, sky, background, objects now, uh, brush, linear, gradient, radial, gradient and range. We're just going to work for this example at the moment with people. So that's the first one I'm going to select. And as far hover over entire person, you can see that it selects the entire model. I can go down over face, skin, iris and pupil, lips and hair. What I'm going to do is turn off entire person and take every other one of these, even if I don't edit them. I'm only going to edit a couple of these, but I'm going to take all of them so as that if it's transferred to the rest of my images and I need to make just subtle adjustments, the masks are already made for me. I'm now going to click Create Mask and that will create seven separate masks. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just make straight adjustments to this. So I'm going to take the hair to that color. That's it. Uh, I'm going to go into the skin of the face. I'm going to lift the exposure slightly and I'm going to bring back the highlights. It's just to make a quick edit with this. Uh, I'll lift the shadows in there as well. Not too much. I'll then get into the body and make a couple of adjustments there and the skin and the body. Again, not too much just for this example. I'll lift the shadows slightly. And that'll do that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into 100% just so that you can see this working. And I'm going to go to the eyes and that's mask five, person one, iris and pupil. The reason it says person one is because Lightroom now reads, as you probably know, everybody in your image. So what I'm going to do here is I am just going to lift the exposure in the eyes slightly. I'm going to lift the whites in the pupils. Another thing I'm going to do to the eyes is I'm just going to change the temperature of them slightly. So you should be able to see that changing. I'm just going to take it in a tiny bit, not too much. I'm going to zoom back out. So that's us. I'm quite happy with that for this example. I can also add other masks to this. I could get and create a new mask and in this case I create a radial gradient and I'm just going to drag the radial gradient there and with this radial gradient I only want it to affect the background. So if I click these three dots here, intersect mask with select the background. Now that that's selected the background I can go in and I can adjust the colours if I wanted to. Let's just leave it at that for this example. From here, we go over to the develop and we select new preset. And this one here, I am just going to call pink hair. And that way I know what's happening within that for later use. I can create a new group or I can leave it in the user presets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new group for this. So I'm going to go new group and I'm going to name this portraits. and create. Now you can see every edit that we've done to this can be selected and deselected here, but the one that you need to make sure you're selected is masking. Now I have eight filters on this, eight masks on this. That mask number eight, as you see here, was the radial background. And so I've got that selected and then I've checked support amount slider. I'll show you in a second. And now I click create. And over here, you will notice portraits, pink hair, lighting, radio. That amount slider that I wanted to show you is here. So I can adjust that and you'll see that it's affecting this mask here. Okay, I'm just going to reset it to where it is at 100. So that's it. That, that's my image done. So if it was an entire shoot, same lighting throughout the shoot, and I wanted the model to have pink hair in this case, blue hair, or I just wanted to edit parts of the skin, whatever, I've created the masks for this. And this is the good part about this. The AI masking 
that you have done. Lightroom now seeks out these separate elements within every image and applies what you've just done to these. And I'll show you a couple of examples. So now we have this image here. I'm not going to clean this image up at all. I'm just going to go over here, pink hair, light and skin, radio, and click OK. That's it now applied to that image. That was super fast, actually. I'll go to this one here. Another one from the shoot. The model's moved. The, the photographer's moved back a bit. And we will do that again. So what you'll see now, updating AI settings. And it's red, the image. It's red where the hair is. It's lightened the skin. It's changed the colour of the eyes. Everything in here. But the good thing about this is that pink radial that I have adjusted there. I can go into that, select the radio, and I can drag it down, drag it out, move it up, take it down in size. So the masks, although they carry over, are entirely editable. I can also go in, if I don't want the pink hair, I can go down to pink hair. Where's the hair? There it is there. And I can change the colour of the hair. Let's go for blue, electric blue, and I like that. So I want to apply that back to the rest of them. You have to go back in and do the presets to do this. But all you do to update it is go over here, right click on that, update with current settings. Masking still checked, support amount slider still checked, everything else is there, update. Go back to this one, pink here, it's now blue. Go back to this one. Pink hair is now blue. So what I can do is I can go in here and rename and rename this to blue here. Click. OK. So that's how the masks translate across and carry across all your images. Editable, time saving. I personally think this is brilliant and a massive time saver for all your editing from a series of shots. So hopefully you got something from that and hopefully it lets you see how quickly this could speed up your editing process. The masks that work and that carry forward are select subject, select sky. So if you're editing a series of landscapes, select background, brush, linear, radio, color range and luminance range. If you think of it all from the same shoot, if you've got a series of landscapes and you want to just adjust the sky slightly, you can apply that to all your images. If it's from a studio or a portrait shoot and you want to add certain elements or adjust certain elements, it will apply it to all your images. And this is the good thing about it. It's really, really quick. Objects. Currently, I haven't had any success with, and that's simply because if you're selecting an object, you have to draw it in. So I haven't had any success with that, but if you have, please put it down in the comments below and let everyone else know. Last but not least with this, if you work in Camera Raw and you go through the same process in Camera Raw and create the masks and then create a preset within Camera Raw, once you reboot Lightroom, it drops in here into the presets in Lightroom, depending on where you've saved it. In this case, portraits, depending on where you've saved it. It doesn't work back the way, or for me, it hasn't worked back the way. Although I've created portraits in here, and it's blue hair, light and skin radio, if I right click on here and go edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023, and I go up into filter, Camera Raw Filter, and I go into Presets, you'll notice it's not here. So it doesn't work back the way into Camera Raw, but from Camera Raw, it works in Lightroom. But you have to reboot Lightroom, relaunch Lightroom for it to show in the presets. Hopefully you get something from that and give it a go, see how it works for you. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.